Welcome back to TPUSA Live. We got a special guest, Victor Marks here. He's a humanitarian. He's also the founder of All Things Possible Ministries. How you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. First, tell us what the doggo's name is. Oh, uh, this is Scout. Super Scout. I love uh, it. Scout. On, our, on our Instagram. Uh, Super good boy. I promise I won't pet Scout because I heard bad things happen. When well, you know, <laughs> women can. Women can. Women and children uh, can. Female uh, privilege. Yeah. 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 I love but she's it. one of the few dogs that faced ISIS fighters, actually. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then within two hours of us recovering or rescuing a kid, uh, they were they were petting her. So wow. it's a real defined switch. Mm. That that's wow. rare. Wow. And then I mean, you're a veteran too, so you've mm -hmm. been overseas, and you're doing a lot of work to make sure people that are dealing with trauma yeah. are becoming victors out of that trauma. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about your ministry and what you do. Well, thanks. Uh, you know, the work we do overseas where we got, I think, most well known was recovering women and children from ISIS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the last seven years, and then helping those who've been affected by ISIS, uh, or terrorism, or the trauma, helping them with the emotional aspect. Mm -hmm. So to date, we've helped over 43,000 women and children. Wow. And that's how, I think, that's a way to help stop uh, future terrorists in, in all actuality. It's showing them God's love, mm -hmm. showing them a yeah. faith in action, because mm -hmm. we'd be right in the middle of, as a humanitarian, high-risk humanitarian, we'd be right in the middle of a gunfight, mm -hmm. craziness happening, and then, you know, a Muslim next to me would go, why are you here? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, well, we love God, and we love y'all, and we're here fighting the same evil mm -hmm. and uh, for mm -hmm. the betterment of, you know, people. That's what's fascinating to me because right now we have so many people that are just like crying from the rooftops of how there's oppressors there. And <laughs> I wish I was able to just like live my life. And uh, we're the freest, most prosperous place in the history of the yes. entire world. Yeah. And then when you go and you're able to expand your worldview and see people that are really under persecution yeah. out here, you're talking about like the LGBT com community yeah. outside of America. Mm -hmm. You talk about women yeah. outside of America. Yeah. Obviously, we're always going to fight for freedom here and equality, yeah. but there's real oppression going on over there. How do you make sure people know and get outside of their just Western world? world well, view? it's facts over assumptions. Mm. You know, and a lot of people are moved emotionally uh, when and there's no basis in fact of what they believe or perceive as suffering. Mm -hmm. It's oftentimes just manufactured yeah. because they want to feel like they're part of something. I just spoke at a school and I told the gals, I said, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was in Iraq again. My wife and I actually have a home wow. uh, where we take women wow. and children still in, our teams over there. And I said, you know, there was a, a young lady who had been kidnapped at 11 years old by ISIS and became a real sex slave. Wow. And um, through facilitating with our teams, we were able to uh, see her free. Mm. And we had her in our house 48 hours after that. And wow. she had a broke nose and a broke back. But the Goodness. biggest smile and joy on her face. Yeah, that's what's Because she said, I, I'm free. Mm. And, wow. and we're committed to helping her go through everything she needs to, to have a really a life of prosperity. So, uh, I think it's a pretty good indicator if some of the gals came up. Oh, I'll give you a great example. There was a protest in New York City. Remember the statues? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. They everybody, and we, our team happened to be up in New York City at the time, and I had scout. Police were everywhere. It was a, a big, and I just walked right in the middle of it, sat down with a group in the court with my dog, and they all started petting her, and I said, hey, what are y'all, what are y'all protesting? This is pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> this is, let, let's get it on. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they're like, uh, well, it's about statues. I go, really, which one? Oh, <laughs> and they're, they're like, well, we think it's over on 9th Street. And then I was like, oh. I said, I love y'all's moxie. I love this youth energy. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, y'all are coming to Iraq with me. <laughs> we, 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 we need people like y'all who have all this energy who can love on people who are really suffering. Yeah. Thousands and thousands. Mm -hmm. And it actually changed the mood and the setting mm -hmm. right in that deal. Mm -hmm. And next yeah. thing you know, they were taking selfies with the dog. <laughs> uh, this kind of reminds me of a quote. I I think it's Ben Franklin, forgive me if I'm wrong, where he says, uh, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Mm. Um, does that have any relevance to you specifically and kind of drive what you're doing overseas? I think it does, but also um, 
I don't know how theologically well, correct that is, but I just well, I think that's just a quote from. Well, well, you know what? I mean, of late, I've been labeled all kind of stuff because I yeah. am the older white man. Yeah. <laughs> I am the, the demonic power. Me, I am the oppressor. You are yeah. the patriarchy. Yeah, uh, I'm the cause of all these. You know, on our social media, people start attacking me. I'm like, uh, uh, my dad was a drug dealer and a pimp. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, I lived Jeez. in a trailer. Uh, I was abused and left for dead in a commercial cooler. Mm. I had 123 visits to a trauma specialist. Jeez. I've been on Depakote, Depakine, Prozac, Zoloft, this abuse bar. I'm like, so go ahead and tell me where that privilege comes in. Because mm. mm-hmm. mm. I actually didn't see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, y- you know, I thank God for the Marine Corps. Yes, sir. Because that was a you know, place that gave me three hot meals, a place to sleep, and a gun. And I was like, can I shoot people? They're like, yeah, just the ones we tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but I took the opportunity to join the military. And to your point, it was out of that pain. Because, you know, people admire you for your success, mm-hmm. but they relate to you because of your pain. Hmm. And I think that's been a yeah. real good uh, uh, driving factor to help wow. uh, those mm-hmm. who suffer. Both here in the U.S. and overseas. Hmm. That's what's fascinating to me. I love movies mm-hmm. a, a lot. And I feel like the storyline they constantly try to tell you is there's a lot of times there's a villain. You're going to go back to their childhood. There was some sort of trauma. Yeah. And then how they yeah. utilize that trauma to go and, like, I need to fight the oppression. Mm-hmm. But you were able to use that trauma to do good. I know mm-hmm. we're sometimes seeing that with yeah. heroes stories yeah, as well. But you were, I mean, I feel like that's why your story is so inspirational because you were five years old when you got yeah. left in that cooler, right? And yeah. mm. when you're going through that and you're looking back, I'm going to use that as motivation. Yeah. I, well, we all have choices. Nobody takes choices away from us. Come on. Mm. It's, it's what we decide to do with it. Yeah. And um, that's why I don't coddle people who've been abused yeah, yeah. or struggle. I just go, you got a decision to make. Mm. And, um, you know, we took a girl into our house who, she was three days underneath her mom's dress. Hajib and only come out for water. And a friend of mine, Dave Eubank, was watching, and they ended up doing a rescue. They brought her to us. She couldn't talk. And my own children here in the U.S., we brought to Iraq for a summer. We were like, this is summer camp for y'all. <laughs> Family vacation. What a way to grow up. <laughs> yeah. You know, Camp Iraq. Yeah. And, and uh, my daughter said, Dad, will she ever talk again? Because she was kind of tonic. Yeah. Yeah. And my bride, who's right over there, uh, who is the most courageous of all our team members. Let's go. Literally will, has gone everywhere. Wow. Uh, and Respect. Yeah, yeah. She... She's like, she wanted to bring bubbles on that pump over there. And I'm like, what, the, what do we not bring bubbles? Like, we need ammo. We need body armor. We need, she just, she, you know, and, and she's like, bring the bubbles. I'm like, you want some? Okay, I'll bring the bubbles. <laughs> bubbles it is. Got it. And because uh, she's a black belt, she can shoot. Oh, she, she can work oh a blade. Right. I mean, she's the real Tomb Raider right there. And, uh, and sure enough, my kids put out those bubbles and started blowing bubbles. The little girl looked, smiled, walked over there, and started talking again. Oh, wow. And I was like, there bubbles go. for everybody. There we go. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it's, I think if we just give people an opportunity for change and hope and healing, mm. and then encourage them, the choice is still yours. Right. And right. Uh, we see God do a lot of great things. Right. And sometimes we're, we've been persecuted by even Christians here in America, oh boy, because they would say, you know, there's a bunch of weird pastors out there mm-hmm. who aren't mm-hmm. good leaders. Mm-hmm. We saw all that happen, mm-hmm. and you know, and I have to get out of my shell because I don't have an opinion. So <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'd call them out and go, "What the heck? Mm-hmm. Uh, grow a backbone." But I remember someone saying, "Why? Well, we saw a picture of you carrying an AK." I said, yeah, and I was carrying a kid, too. Uh, yeah. Comment on that. In Mosul, where ISIS was shooting at us. Or, mm. I just go, well, do you lock your door at night there in America, Super Saint? <laughs> and then they get quiet. <laughs> so I think there's a place that we're called to stand up for the weak and uh, the innocent. Yeah. And God's word says we should be about the business of helping widows and orphans. Hmm. So mm-hmm. that's what we do. Hmm. What's the most effective way that you've seen to kind of 
shed light on how lucky people are to live here. Because Thank going you. to the Middle East, I would imagine you've seen some crazy stuff that you wouldn't even think of seeing in the United States. How, how do you kind of convey that to people that you talk to? I, I think through our media, because mm -hmm. we're able to take short clips and show people. Uh, you, you, you do a video when ISIS is shooting at you. <laughs> yeah. people and see do it, it the way I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I was trying to do a live thing. We called a signal. I was like, hey, so we're here in Mosul. And, and you, you, you hear, oh, holy cow. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Like, Don't forget I, to share this. Yeah. 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 I was yeah. like, hang on a second. I said, what? Oh, yeah. That, that's ISIS. They're, okay. I got to go. I got to go. But uh, I'll tune in later on the internet. <laughs> That's so, wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I have to say because Lord have mercy you deal with things and you see people underneath real oppression right yeah real uh, hurt real and, slaves and real slavery you know not yeah. not this false slavery that we say and we hear about in the states but it's it's in, you know, piggybacking on what Joe Bob was saying, the fact that there's people here talking about, oh, we're so oppressed, oh, the hegemonic power, oh, you know, you know, patriarchy and all this type of thing. And here you are going to where real oppression is, mm -hmm. going to where real issues are that are really affecting people. It's just amazing. But I have to ask, so what other projects are you working on? I mean, you already have a slew under your belt. What yeah. other things you you've got in the future? Well, after Iraq, we went to Cambodia, mm -hmm. where we have another uh, safe house. We do mm -hmm. work on the border. We've helped capture and report guys who were bringing kids over for Goodness. sex trafficking. Yeah. We yeah. go, we followed the entire trail. My COO, retired Colonel Jeff Teagues, was a Delta operator. Had mm -hmm. 10 That's years cool. at the unit, thousand missions, never lost a man. Wow, and uh, he's standing right over there, uh, he, and he he's he's our he's head of our ops. So we move in excellence in whatever realm we do and whatever line of effort. But we're here in the U.S. fighting sex trafficking. Uh, my dog has a patch pedophile hunting. That's <laughs> fantastic. And, uh, yeah, that's interesting when you're in an elevator, you see guys go. Why are you getting Ooh. scared there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably doing more than Kataji Brown Jackson's doing. Yeah. 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 Which, again, God's real. Yes. you know, this is what I tell people with the left and right. I just go, you don't have to hate someone who disagrees with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were people that are no longer on the earth that you don't have to. I speak to the military. We were, we, we'll go to bases and speak for kind of... But one of the things I said that helped a, a unit, a team that came back in from a lot of fighting, I said, you don't have to hate your enemy to kill him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how you protect your heart. Because there were times doing that's our deep. good work, you'd see so much. Tried, a girl was attacked overseas. The guy cut her hand off, poured battery acid on her. Goodness and, gracious. And uh, we saved her and did a recovery and got her surgeries. And I told her, she's wrapped up, I said, We'll find them, mm. and I'll make them pay. Yes, sir. And it took us a year because this guy had money, mm. but we mm. have God. Apparently, not enough money. Yeah, no. <laughs> and and we got a lot of people praying. Yes, sir. we end up catching him. Uh, our, uh, an associate team got him. But you know what? It's you got to be careful in the fight not to let the darkness mm. get on you, or else you That's slip deep. back in the stuff. Uh, so keeping a pure heart and whatever yeah. we're doing. So we got, we have a training center uh, up in Colorado Springs where we just had uh, a group of women who were trafficked come in and we taught them jujitsu. Let's go. <laughs> oh, <that's dope. laughs> my, my wife's teaching stand up fighting. Uh, I taught blade work. Okay. We taught them how to shoot. And then we set up a mock rescue of two girls who were being held captive. They ran the recon. They ran the operation. Holy we cow. just sat back. And you want to see women going in with as professional grade of off guns on bad guys. <laughs> and uh, boom, one lady shot a guy right in the nose. It's like, yeah, that's you shot him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that's really great. The guy was bleeding. Wow. They rescued the girls, got him out. Holy so, cow. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. And we want to help the next generation mm. gain skill sets that are needed for our future here and in the as, US. as we wrap up here, i got a few more questions. Yeah. When I was hearing this story before the show, I was fascinated because, I mean, I don't have an expertise on like how to handle trauma at yeah. all. So when I hear something like this, you take someone or people that have gone through PTSD in major trauma yeah. back into a <clears throat> traumatic experience, yeah. I think of that, it's like, 
how, how does exactly that work and then where can people go to support you guys? Well, thank you. It's a rare approach to therapy and uh, <laughs> it's extremely effective. And everything I just told you, the caveat of the weekend is we pray for them. Fantastic. I believe that Fantastic. there are demonic forces that are assigned to people. Hmm. But I also believe, and God's given us a gift to pray and identify what they are, why they came, what are the lies they're telling a person. And when a person gets free, all of a sudden they're really free <laughs> at a whole different level. And if people want to find out more, uh, our website is Victor Martz with an X. Dot com, <laughs> and then we're on social media. And for an old guy, we've got young people that really help us, <laughs> and uh, we reach millions every week. Yeah, yeah cool. and I think just wrapping this up, I love when you remind people that like we're not fighting against flesh and blood, no. we're mm. fighting against principalities. And I think that whole demonic force, we forget about the spiritual realm at times, and that's something that needs to be fought. It's true. It will manifest in the physical, mm -hmm. and sometimes you got to put the you got to hurt people's feelings, mm -hmm. uh, who are evil yeah. mm -hmm. and have to be stopped physically yeah. in whatever way. But yeah, ultimately it is a battle between, um, in a realm that we can't see, but know it exists. Yeah. Amen. Make yeah. sure you support and also make sure you support through prayer as well. I thank think you, you do a great job of making sure people fight back through prayer. Well, thank you for all of y'all. And I'll tell you what, seeing this place gives older people like, whoa, man, this is a HQ right here. <laughs> we got some action happening right here. It's just fun. And then we feel even safer with you guys around. Yeah, yeah. Say that for sure. Victor, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to be back for one last thing. Alex Clark's going to join us to talk about YWLS.